The Holy Roman Empire has a unique infantry unit called the Landsknecht. Available in the Castle Age, it is supposed to be the more fragile but quicker and deadlier version of the other option, the Man at Arms. But are they any good? And in what scenarios should you pick them over the Man at Arms? Welcome to Edge of Uber, everyone, and let's talk about that. Alright, there's a lot to unpack here. Before we get into the video, keep in mind that all of the units have full Castle Age blacksmith upgrades without the Marching Drill speed tech. With that out of the way, let's first compare stats. The Man at Arms in the Castle Age has 155 HP, has 6 melee and pierce armor, and has 14 attack. It can also move at 1.12 tiles per second. The Lanskenecht on the other hand has only 80 HP, 2 melee armor and no pierce armor whatsoever, but has a higher 19 attack and can move faster at 1.25 tiles per second. Clearly, the Man at Arms are significantly tankier than the Lanskenecht. They both train at the same time in 22 seconds. That said, the whole point of the Landsknecht is that they can deal additional trample damage to units around them. After doing a few tests, I've noticed a few things about this mechanic. First, the unit in the front, to the left, and to the right of the direction of the strike of the Landsknecht sword all take the same damage. Armor also negates the trample damage as well. Since the villagers have two melee armor, they took 17 out of the 19 damage from the Landsknecht. The three villagers to the back of the initial three took reduced damage. The unit right behind the front target took only 11 damage, again, two damage being mitigated by the armor, and the villagers to the left and the right of that took eight damage after armor. In short, the Landsknechts deal 100% of their damage to the center, left, and right units of the direction of the strike of their sword. They then deal 68% of the damage to the unit right behind the strike, and deal 53% of the damage to the units to the left and right of that. Remember, those were equally spaced out units, but enemy units could be even more tightly packed and squished together due to terrain, pathing, or movement, which can potentially allow Landsknechts to dish out even more damage. Hence, this bonus is really no joke. Take a good engagement with the right angle and you'll deal a ton of trample damage. Okay, now that we know how the Landsknechts work, let's dive right into the tests. Let's begin with a raw 1v1. Keep in mind that the Man at Arms in this test will have neither two-handed weapons nor heavy maces researched. It's a very easy win for the Man at Arm, with half of his HP still remaining. In a 20 vs 20 charge, however, the Landsknechts absolutely obliterate the Man at Arms, with a whopping 17 of them surviving the battle. After seeing this result, I thought I may have skewed it a little bit too far by going 20 vs 20, so I tried a 10 vs 10. 8 Landsknechts still survived in another heavily one-sided skirmish. I tested this all the way down to a 3 vs 3, which seems to be the tipping point, with one Landsknecht barely surviving. Hence, Landsknecht's trample damage bonus seems to properly kick in after 3 or more of them fight in a tightly packed engagement. Split them apart or take fragmented engagements, and you'll watch your Landsknechts fall down one by one. They need to stick together and fight against units who also stick together. Now, obviously we can make the argument that Landsknechts are more expensive than the Man at Arms, so it's normal that they lose in equal numbers. But even with equal resources spent as seen here, and I'm assuming gold and food are of equal value for simplicity, the Landsknechts still win by quite a margin. Equal resource or equal numbers, do not fight Landsknechts with Man at Arms in numbers and in close quarters. Moving on, the Landsknecht unsurprisingly gets demolished against the Knight in a 1v1. It is extremely brutal as the knight's high charge attack damage decimates its target as the knight barely takes any damage itself. The 10 vs 10 was slightly better, but still very one-sided fight. Of course, we can make the argument that they do better against the knights without their charge or a few spears mixed in to tank the charge, but we're testing the raw power here. If you're up against knights, Landsknechts in equal numbers are not the answer. With equal resources, however, the Landsknechts clean up the knights, even after tanking the charge. Remember, the higher the numbers and the more packed the fight is, the larger the margin of win will be for the Landsknechts. Do not underestimate them when they're grouped up. On the other hand, the Man at Arms show their weaknesses against the knight here. Just like the Landsknecht, Man at Arms lose the 1v1 convincingly, lose to knights in equal numbers, and lose to knights in equal resources as well. Remember folks, these results are without the heavy maces and two-handed upgrades. Fighting knights with Man at Arms alone is not a good idea in the long run if you don't have those upgrades researched, but they can still hold their front line if you have crossbows supporting them. That said, once you research both technologies and once the bugs are fixed, Man at Arms should comfortably win against the knights in equal resources as, even without those techs, the fight was already too close. With generic Man at Arms, however, you should avoid knights whenever you can. Moving on to the Horseman, and in typical fashion, the Landsknecht loses yet again to the Horseman in a 1v1, despite being an expensive gold unit. In equal numbers, the Landsknechts decimate the Horseman, as expected from the previous tests. 
The Man at Arms tests are also similar. Horsemen simply don't do well against either the Man at Arms or the Landsknecht, so it doesn't really matter which one you go with here. Unless you can catch Landsknechts alone or fragmented, do not charge into them with Horsemen. Alright, let's look into the range units now. I originally thought that the Landsknechts would be shredded by kiting archers, but the speed and high damage of the Landsknechts were enough to bring the archers down barely. Keep in mind that this engagement is still not favorable cost-wise, as you'll be losing 100 gold apiece with each Landsknecht going down. The Man at Arms with their whopping 6 pierce armor and high HP surely demolish archers, right? Well, yes and no. Indeed, more than half of them survive, which is better than the Landsknecht, but it takes them absolutely forever to bring the archers down. Their low movement speed and their lower damage drags this engagement far too long. In the end though, they win convincingly and they're clearly better than the Landsknechts against the archers. Moving on to the crossbowmen, the Landsknechts do even better against them than they did to the archers. Since they don't have any pierce armor, the crossbow's unique bonuses don't apply to them. Hence, more than half of them survive and Landsknechts turns out to be a pretty decent counter to crossbowmen in equal numbers. Crossbows against men at arms, however, may surprise you, as kiting crossbows turned out to be men at arms' worst nightmare. More than half of the crossbows survive, as the slow men at arms simply cannot catch up to them quickly enough. Hence, if you have a critical mass of crossbows, never hesitate taking a fight against the men at arms, as you'll chew through them with a bit of micro. If you see Lanskinechts, however, run and never look back if you don't have a frontliner to defend your crossbows. And finally, let's test these two units in a mixed battle. I've added a bit of everything to the opponent to try to average out any counter mechanic and make it as fair as possible. Furthermore, both the Landsknechts and the Men at Arms are supported by archers and crossbows. I also specifically gave the opponent more numbers to fully test the capability of frontlining, and the results indicate a few things. What you will see here may surprise you again. A bit of a repeat happens here from the previous tests. The Man at Arms do survive much, much longer, but they don't do as much damage, so the overall engagement actually goes much worse for us, as the enemy chews through our range units once all of the Man at Arms finally fall down. The Landsknechts, on the other hand, do so much damage so quickly that it does not matter that they fall faster. The overall engagement ends up much quicker than the Man at Arms, but it still turns out better for us. Intuitively, one would think that the Man at Arms' high HP and really high melee and pierce armor would make them excellent frontliners to your range units so they can hold your ground. Turns out, this isn't really the case for most scenarios. You're actually better off with Landsknecht's much higher damage output, which means that you actually should prefer training them in those close-packed skirmishes against pretty much any melee unit, even with archers and crossbows behind them. One consolation for the Man at Arms here is that, although your engagements are worse, they hold on much longer. This means that you should definitely prefer them defensively. Time matters when you're building a landmark or researching something in a building that you need to defend, and Man at Arms can do just that, buy you time. They're also better at buying you time offensively too, so pick wisely. Once again, if you research both unique upgrades, they will fare closer to the Landsknecht, but my guess is that my guidelines above will still hold. In fact, you only need 1400 resources and 5.5 minutes of research time to fully upgrade the Landsknecht, while it takes a whopping 2250 resources and 8 minutes to fully upgrade the Man at Arms. Although I haven't tested the Imperial Age myself, quickly glancing on the upgrades makes me believe that more or less the same principles we've tested above still holds. If I test every single scenario, this video would take an hour long, but the main engagements shown should give you a good idea on the strengths and weaknesses of each unit so you can judge your engagements much more accurately in-game. In short, do not underestimate the Landsknechts when they're grouped together and are in numbers. The bigger the Landsknecht army, the more careful you should be with your engagements. Ensure that you have a lot of archers, horse archers, hand cannons, mangadai, some mangonels, or other units that can assist a tanky frontliner against them. Otherwise, you'll lose your melee units in the blink of an eye. Well, that's all you need to know about the tactical choice between the Landsknechts versus the Man at Arms in Age of Empires 4. If you folks enjoy this type of analytical videos and want to see more of them, please let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to not miss out on any awesome Age of Empires content. You can also share some ideas of game mechanics that you'd like me to explore and I can look into them. As always, thank you so much for watching everyone and see you all in the next one.